no matter what you call it, Perilla Mint, Beefsteak Plant, Rattlesnake Weed, Shiso, or its scientific name, Perilla Frutescens, this invasive annual herbaceous member of the mint family is a huge problem over much of the eastern United States. It is native to Asia and can now be found in just about every eastern state, but is most prominent in the southeast. Perilla, like many invasives, loves disturbance and is frequently seen growing in areas that have been tilled, dozed, logged, or even mowed on a regular basis. Although it can grow in full sun to partial shade, it does best in somewhat shaded locations such as woods edges and around farm buildings. Its preference for some shade often has it growing with another invasive that loves shaded, disturbed conditions, Japanese stiltgrass. Perilla mint can be identified by its large, rounded leaves with deeply toothed edges that have an opposite arrangement on the stem. The leaves have a somewhat mini smell when crushed, but it is not as crisp as the culinary mints. Leaf color can vary from deep green to purple and every combination in between. The hairy stem is square in cross section like many plants in the mint family and can vary in color just like the leaves. Plants can reach a height of two to three feet and may branch towards the top. Small white to purple flowers are born on three to six inch long spikes at the ends of the stalks and branches from July until October, depending on location. Although the flowers are attractive to many pollinators, do not allow that to fool you into letting this plant take over your property. The distinctive seed heads and dead plant stalks are persistent through the winter. There are a couple of reasons Perilla mint is such a problem. First, it can outcompete many natives in disturbed sites and often forms dense monocultures or associations with other invasive species such as stiltgrass. Since it is an annual, it tends to grow quickly and can outpace most natives. The second reason Perilla mint is bad news is it often grows in the shady margins of pastures where it may be grazed by livestock late in the growing season when other more favored forage plants are less abundant. Perilla contains a ketone that is toxic to ruminants and horses and causes a condition known as acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS, commonly called panting disease, which can be fatal. There is no effective treatment for livestock suffering from ARDS. And Perilla mint is the number one cause of livestock plant poisoning deaths in Tennessee and other parts of the Southeast. Perilla is especially dangerous when flowering as the flowers and seed heads contain the most toxins. The toxins remain viable after the plant is dead and dried, so it can also cause poisoning if baled in hay. If you have any type of livestock, Perilla mint is not a plant you want on your property. If you love learning about the plants on your land, be sure to pollinate that like button. Believe it or not, Perilla mint is still sold and planted. Its variable color, hardiness, and resemblance to another common flower garden plant, coleus, make it a somewhat popular plant with flower gardeners and is likely the reason perilla was brought into North America many years ago. Perilla is also sold as a plant for the vegetable garden. That's right. Certain varieties of perilla are used for several purposes in Asian cuisine. Controlling perilla is not hard, but due to the number of seed it can produce, control may take several years of work. Since it is an annual with a shallow root system, small infestations can be hand pulled easily. If it is not in flower, the pulled plants can simply be left laying on the ground where they will dry out and die. Larger infestations can be mowed or weed whacked before they flower, and if timed correctly, the plants will not regrow. Plants that are flowering may still set seed when pulled if far enough along in the process, so flowering perilla should be pulled and bagged to be disposed of in the trash. For large infestations, herbicide will be the best option and a variety of broadleaf selective herbicides are effective against perilla. In monoculture or near monoculture situations, a non-selective herbicide can be used. Just be sure to follow the label for treating perilla. It's not just a recommendation, it's the law. The best way to beat a perilla mint problem is to treat a patch as soon as possible. Whether that means pulling the plants up, mowing them down, or treating them chemically. Just don't let it set seed where it can spread rapidly across your property, just like that other invasive species it is often found growing with, Japanese stiltgrass, which you can learn more about in this video, and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.